Good morning, everybody. Hello from uh, beautiful sunny Dorset. My name is Ali Board, and I am broadcasting live on the SAA's Facebook page this morning as part of something that I call Technique Tuesday. And we've called it a Technique Tuesday takeover because usually I'd be broadcasting on my own social media pages, but the wonderful team at the SAA have very kindly allowed me to take over their social media just for about an hour or so. Why have they allowed me to do that? They've allowed me to do that because I am currently taking part in Dorset Art Weeks. Dorset Art Weeks is an open studio event where well, there's nearly 300 of us taking part. We throw open the doors of our studios, we invite people in, but I'm very aware that geographically you might not be able to take part, but that doesn't mean you should miss out. So what I try to do is put as much of it, as much of it online as I possibly, possibly can, and then you can take part in it too. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. And uh, if you are watching this live, then I can see your comments coming in already. I'll give you a shout out in just a minute. Um, and I can see that you are actually all over the world. Now, I currently, the, the comments that I have up in front of me right now are actually on the SAA's Facebook page. So if you're over on a different page or you're watching this via catch up, my apologies that I might not see your comments come up. It doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. It just means I haven't got enough windows open on my devices or uh, eyes in my head to be able to acknowledge all of you. But however you're watching, Thank you very much for taking the time and trouble to tune in. Um, I have a little bit of housekeeping to do first. Don't get put off. It's just a bit of news for you. A few little dates and bits and pieces of information. But before I do any of that, I'm just going to give a few people a shout out, if that's all right with everyone. Uh, Heather, good morning. Who else we got? Uh, Jane in the Isle of Man. Good morning. Uh, Rosie, bonjour in, in France. Terrible French accent. Dorset French, not good. Can you imagine what I'm like at ballet? Uh, Linda, good morning. Thea, Julie in Melbourne. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> my lovely good day uh cheryl is in lincolnshire val just down the road from me rajat good morning who's in india hello lovely to have you with us uh, annette in norfolk oh patricia is saying it's miserable in suffolk today oh patricia i am sorry about that let me see if i can be a little sunshiny ray for you to brighten up your day caroline good morning trudy just down the road uh, lots of people tuning in thank you all very much for taking the time and trouble now this this is number three in the series of Technique Tuesday takeovers that I've been doing. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we'd, oh, was that two weeks ago? Uh, we did uh, a fox uh, demonstration. Last week we did a sunflower demonstration. And this is all to do with a new body of work that I have going on, which is uh, going to be a very slow build uh, because it's quite an involved uh, collection of work. Uh, to do with more sort of illustration techniques, uh, to do with working collaboratively, co oh, I can't speak this morning, collaboratively, there we go, uh, with a poet, the wonderful Andrew Doughty. And uh, so if you want to go back and watch those two on Catch Up, you can do via the SAA's Facebook page or via my Dorset Art Week blogs. I'll be doing a little bit of a recap, but actually what I'm going to do today is uh, not focus so much on the painting part of this new collection of work. I'm going to go right back to basics to show you what happens when Andrew has written the poem, how I start to process and how I start to put that together. So that is what we're going to be doing together this morning. If you have any questions at all, pop them in those comments. If I will go and check all the other platforms and I will try to get back to you as uh, much as I can. Lovely Jean uh, has just popped up as well. Good morning, lovely. Um, now, bit of housekeeping. This is a sort of bad news, good news bit of housekeeping, okay? So this is the last one of the Dorset Art Weeks uh, broadcasts and it is going to be the last Technique Tuesday just for a little while. I just need a little bit of time away if that's okay. So the next Technique Tuesday will return on the 5th of July. I have a very, very busy June indeed. And so I will be back with my normal Technique Tuesday broadcast on the 5th of July. I will have lots to shout about on that day because I have a, a new uh, teaching um, project on the horizon. And that will be back over on my Alison Seaboard Facebook page. So uh, that is, that's the kind of the bad news. I mean, it's not really bad news is it because I will be back I'm just taking um, a few weeks off going on holiday as well fingers crossed hopefully um, 
But the good news, John, I know the good news. The good news is you get an extra all singing, all dancing demonstration to make up for it. Now, as part of the UK's Platinum Jubilee celebrations, I will be back here on the SAA's Facebook page uh, with a full start to finish demonstration, calling it Raven at the Tower. Now, if you go onto the SAA's Facebook page, you will find that event. You will also find the photograph that I will be working on from even uh, and you will find an equipment list as well it's all in the discussion part of that so you will be able to either follow along as I paint or you'll be able to do that uh, via catch-up my strong advice in terms of that is actually that you just make yourself a cup of tea and you tune in for the broadcast and uh, you watch it and then you try it afterwards. It's like a paint along, but you know me. I mean, not this, but this work, but normally I paint at the speed of light, don't I? So let's just remind you uh, at, uh, of that. So, no, that's the wrong one, Ali. This one, Thursday the 2nd of June at 9 a.m. That's the UK time. Um, and I can see a couple of people have said, it is Technic Tuesday on the 5th of July at uh, 9am. Yes, it has just recently changed times because uh, my life has changed a little bit and I know your lives have changed a little bit too. So therefore, Technic Tuesday in the future will be back at 9am. But that uh, Raven uh, demonstration, it says 9am on there. Just double check the time because I have a feeling that actually we decided that it would be 10am. But at least you'll be early. I will have a, a look at that. Um, I have a feeling that that's 10am. I have a feeling that that graphic isn't correct. Too many things to organise at the moment. It's coming at me uh, left, right and centre. But uh, keep your eye on the events anyway and uh, I will make sure that that's there. So, uh, why am I doing these broadcasts? I'm doing these broadcasts to bring you this new body of work and it's based on illustration and based collaboratively with a lovely poet called Andrew Doughty. Andrew has been writing for me to do with subject matter that both he and I are inspired by. And one of the things uh, that I said to him, I gave him a sort of list, a tick list, if you like, of subjects that really do crop up in my work an awful lot. He came back with the most beautiful poetry that I have been using uh, in my work. I've been showing the text. And if you want to see those broadcasts, like I say, if you want to see the fox and the sunflower, go back and watch those on catch up. But I'm going right back to basics with this. So here is the poem that Andrew uh, wrote for me when I suggested that we use a spider web as a starting point. So here is his poem. Spun, weaved, threaded, gossamer and sunlight, gemmed with diamond dew and spanned betwixt branch, leaf and earth. Now, usually what happens the minute that I get uh, that poem drop into my inbox, sometimes I have an instant kind of little mental image of how that picture is going to go together. Sometimes it needs a little bit of investigation. And that is definitely where I am with this poem. So there are some things that I need to do to sort out, to experiment with before I necessarily launch myself into a great big piece. As you can imagine, and if you've seen previous broadcasts, you will know that I kind of test theories out, that uh, I sort of play about with composition. And so rather than me do all of that in advance today, I thought it would be interesting if we kind of did that process together. If you were able to understand what's going on in my head, how I'm gonna sort those uh, things out and that type of thing. So come along with me for the ride. Uh, let's go to that overhead camera and you, I will show you a couple of pieces that I have been working on and you can sort of see why I need to do as much research as I do. So here is the piece that we were working on last week. This is my sunflower piece and uh, I sadly haven't been able to push it on much further just because I have been so busy 
with uh, Dorset Art Weeks, I'm glad to say. So I haven't been able to do an awful lot more to it. But you can see that the composition uh, is quite involved. It's quite intricate. This is all based on the maths of the Fibonacci sequence. So uh, it needed a lot of time spent on it. Um, we've got uh, bird imagery on there. We've obviously got sunflower. We've got a little bit of Celtic knotwork because some of these new designs are based on uh, Celtic heritage in Dorset. So that's what we were doing uh, last week. Now this one you might be interested in. This one I've sort of flashed up as a, a few teasers, um, but it has a, a little bit of um, a kind of link with what we're doing today, just simply because I'm gonna be using some of this knot work that I uh, designed. I will also show you how to put together a little bit of Celtic knot work. Um, so stay tuned for that. And you can see there, I'm just building it up with uh, my bit of moonscape, with the text, the hair, all of those types of things, okay? So what tends to happen with a collection of work that works around the same themes, you have a set pattern, but a set pattern for me becomes a little bit dangerous because I don't want all the pieces to look identical. They need to have some links. And therefore this uh, poem that we put together uh, what that Andrew put together and has uh, very kindly shared with me is going to need a bit of a thought process. Now, in the meantime, while I've been rabbiting on about all of those kind of things, um, I've missed some hellos. Uh, Ali D, good morning. Linda D, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Templeman. What's up? Uh, Sue, good morning. Uh, lovely uh, to have you all with us. So, uh, let's take you through this thought process that I had, okay? Uh, I've got to lift some things. I'll talk more about this paper in just a second, but I want to uh, pull some things out of here to, to share with you. I sort of threw everything at it. Now this, here we go, let's uh, share this with you. This is a tracing that I have taken from that hair piece that I have already done, which incorporates the, the knot work and a few leaf shapes. We've got bluebells and snowdrops in this one, which I don't think are going to be applicable to my spider web design. I have a few ideas of my spider web design, but actually the spider web and the knot work are the two things that I'm gonna be uh, playing about with today. Good morning, Sue. <clears throat> So how have I uh, constructed this? This was constructed uh, through uh, various other means and eventually I'll show you straight away because there is this discussion about tracing to be had and is tracing cheating and all of those kind of things which you know I think, let's not beat around the bush, you know I think is complete nonsense. Um, and so all I've done is lay a piece of tracing paper over that design that I have already drawn and I've then got it as a piece of reference. Now the lovely Jeanette is uh, in the room who I know is also taking part uh, in Dorset Art Weeks. Uh, Jeanette my lovely I hope it's going well for you and I do hope you're getting uh, lots of visitors. We've got Liz in the room as well, lovely to have you here. <clears throat> so um, this is a, a design that I've taken off with tracing uh, just simply because I've got it there then I can do whatever I want with it I can manipulate it I can change it I don't have to keep uh, referring back to this kind of very delicate surface the the black paper all of the gouache and things that I've been using I don't have to ruin that all the time I've got the tracing of it and therefore I can mess about with this this becomes less valuable and I don't worry about it so much so that is my starting point. But of course, before I get to the design and all of those types of considerations, I need to think about a spider web, don't I? So that was where I wanted to start with you today. Good morning, Anita. Anita, how lovely for you, of you to join us. You are very kind. So I'm gonna tape a little bit of white paper down just so that you can see very clearly what it is that I am going to do with this spider web. And I've got a piece of tracing paper. I very often in this kind of illustrative work, work straight onto tracing paper because then if I want to transfer it to a surface, I haven't then got to trace it off and I'm got all of that performance to go through. I can simply uh, take my design if I think it works or I can retrace it if it doesn't quite work. And then I've got lots of bits of information to work with. Now, the first thing I want to do within this square, I've drawn a rough square. You will see why I've drawn a rough square. 
uh, a little bit later on. Um, it's just because I want to construct my web and I want to start playing about with cobwebs, how they are constructed, what looks aesthetically pleasing from a painting point of view, all of those kind of things. And I thought it might be helpful to you as well to see how I draw a cobweb and how I put it together. I do hope that that's useful to you. Now, one of the things that I did in doing my bit of research for this piece of work was that I did go on to YouTube and I googled, well, or put in the search engine, how do spiders make their webs? And there's some fantastic time lapse footage of how spiders put their webs together. It's fascinating. I mean, I am a little bit of an arachnophobe, so the actual spiders themselves do make me do this a little bit um, but I, I'm keeping a lid on that because I just think the webs are beautiful. So let's look at how uh, a spider web is constructed and one of the things that I wanted to do was to actually attempt to draw it in the way that a spider constructs it. Why is that important? It's important because I think it gives it a much more aesthetic realistic kind of look. Now it would be tempting wouldn't it? to draw a spider web by putting a dot in the middle, by putting kind of radiating lines out from that center and then trying to link them all up. But that's not how a spider web is constructed. And I think myself that looks a little bit too cartoon like. All right. Yeah, Julie is saying the orb spiders webs are amazing. Now, Julie, you have where you are in the world spiders that I don't ever want to meet. I'm mostly very happy with the spiders that we have here in the UK. I don't want to be <laughs> anywhere near some Australian spiders because they scare me. Uh, so the first thing that most spiders do, not all spiders, but most spiders uh, create uh, bridging lines. And what that does is link up whatever structure it has decided to put its web between. And so those bridging lines kind of go from uh, edges to edges. Now I'm gonna put a slight curve in mine. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, and let's take another one over this way. Let's go from here uh, over to this side maybe. And we'll do one that goes uh, from here down into the bottom corner. So we've kind of got a bit of a square within a square. And then what they do is they create uh, some more structured lines that go between. So they might link up uh, one line to another line, a shorter route for how to get to one area of the web to, to another. So we'll put a, a couple of those in and it's these lines that stop it looking too symmetrical like this. OK, um, then what they do is they take their the lines from the, what's called the radii from outside into the middle and then they go around and from there back out again. So they don't for the time being literally start from a center point. They'll probably drop one line down they will anchor it with a little bit of extra silk there, a bit of gossamer like Andrew describes, and then they'll take that line out to the edge. Now, sometimes rather than going back to the center every time, that line comes from another and comes maybe out a bit further. So you can see how it stops it looking like a cartoon and starts making it look a little bit more realistic. So then let's take some more of those out. Let's take some more interesting ones. They are not all symmetrically balanced. They're not all equidistant. Uh, let's take another one from here right up to the edge and they make their way around in this fashion. So let's put a few more in. Uh, let's do one up there. Now, part of me, you see, is actually thinking from an aesthetic, from actually what it might look like from drawing terms whilst trying to keep uh, the spider's sense of placement in mind. So we'll go from here. Let's do another one up this side and across. Good morning, Joe. And another one from here. And then maybe one last one that comes from the center that way. 
So we've got now a much more interesting, much more aesthetically pleasing web in comparison to a sort of a, a firework is what that is really. Uh, then from here, they start to work their way around in that kind of classic spiral. So I'm going to start putting them in. Now I'm putting a slight curve in them because of the tension that occurs between one strand and the next, which of course I can't replicate uh, because there isn't actually any tension on the pencil line. Uh, some of them are quite close cropped. Some of them go a bit haywire. There's been some uh, rather disturbing experiments done on spiders where they've given them all sorts of different drugs, one of which was caffeine and the state of their spider webs after they had taken caffeine. But I'll let you look that up. I did disappear down an Alice in Wonderland size rabbit hole with my research into how spider webs are constructed. Um, but you can disappear off down the same one. It was fascinating. I spent some very happy hours doing that. So can you see now how it's starting to come together? These lines, incidentally, aren't always the sticky variety. These aren't the ones that trap the bugs. These are for the structure to keep it as stable and as strong. If you've ever walked into a spider web, you'll know how strong they are. Uh, coming around that way. So you can see now starting to look a bit more realistic. Let's put those last few in. I try to work it quite methodically. I try to vary it up so that they don't all become incredibly equidistant. They need to all join up. Don't leave a space between areas. It doesn't look right. <clears throat> and then let's go Let's start with this one and start pushing it out a little bit. And you can do this. One of the joyful things about working on tracing paper in this way is, of course, you can do this several times and you're not spoiling your posh piece of paper that you're working on or if you haven't quite worked out how it's all going to come together, all of those sorts of things. It's, uh, it's a real jackpot of a, a technique for me. Now, I'm actually going to start inverting some of the curves on these lines as well as if they've got gravity and of course they don't they don't all just go round and round and round and round you've got all different ones as well you also have some ones that kind of disappear off at a jaunty angle they don't all come from the middle and slide round the edge so let's uh what did i do with that one hmm, i'm sort of thinking about how i let's have one coming off there let's have some like little ones there are some sometimes they cross over so let's take that one to there and then continue that line up. All of these things continually breaking up this kind of idea that they all have to be massively perfect. Uh, what else should we do? Let's do uh, a couple of lines that go off to the edge, like they're sort of anchored down. You can have huge amounts of fun with this, getting the construction in. But for the time being, that is how I'm going to leave my spider web. I'm hoping that that gives you a little bit of an idea of how you might go about constructing it. Have a really good look. Take lots of photographs. Uh, in the UK, we're sort of past frosty mornings now, but when we do get the frost back again, go out because the frost clings to those cobwebs and it makes them so much easier to see. Uh, occasionally, I do take a piece of black card out with me when I'm photographing them so that you can just sort of slip the black card behind. I mean, I do it on my smartphone, um, uh, which I know is not the done thing, but never mind. Um, and then take a snap of them and take the card away. They're still undisturbed, but I've been able to see them a lot better. So there's a handy hint for you. So. I have that, so that's one little bit of information that I have. I'm just gonna carefully peel this masking tape away. So there's the first bit of my construction. Now the next bit of my construction, let's go back to this knot work that we've been talking about. Now again, I will let you go and research Celtic knot work. I've been working with Celtic knot work for a number of years. It was actually, the thing that interested me the most when I started painting, I've sort of gone back to my roots with this. I became really fascinated uh, with the Book of Kells. 
So that's Kells spelt uh, K-E-L-L-S, the Lindisfarne Gospels, um, all of those beautiful illuminated manuscripts. Um, I've done work myself, I've done commissions with those kind of things. Uh, so I'm going properly uh, back to where I started in my painting career. And I love a bit of knot work. It just, uh, as a border and as a pattern for illustration, I think it works really beautifully. But how to construct it. So I have somewhere here in amongst, uh, oh no, I don't, it's on the pad I was doing. I have uh, the original tracing that I had. Let's uh, just uh, fish that out for you so that you can see it. So here is the original uh, bit of knot work that I constructed. The idea is that it is uh, roughly a continuous line that goes backwards and forwards, but that's great. And of course you can find lots of copyright free versions of these to be able to trace them yourself. But what if you want to have a go at constructing knot work? How are you going to go about it? So the way that I do it is that I start with a piece of graph paper. Now this is tracing graph. So this is actually graph paper that is on tracing paper. So of course, doubly useful in terms of the way that I'm gonna construct my pictures. Uh, now this isn't the easiest of things to find anymore, but there is no reason at all why, if you've got a good quality printer, why you can't put tracing paper through your computer printer and print out your own version of graph paper. You can then choose whether your graph is imperial or metric. Um, I think uh, this might be imperial. In fact, I'm almost positive that it's imperial. And uh, you could have large squares, small squares, whatever works for you, okay? And one of the most fun ways that you can start constructing a piece of knot work is to take your pencil for a walk. In fact, I'm gonna to switch to a, a normal pencil just so that you can see it more clearly because you'll get a bit of interference from the graph paper. So let's uh, take a channel, let's take a section of our graph paper and let's let our pencil go for a walk. So if we take our pencil and we go down this way and down that way, it could come to a halt down there and then it could go up and around the other side. Maybe it comes back that way. Maybe it comes back this way and then it disappears. Now, this is not the neatest and tidiest way of constructing knot work, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. Then what I would do is I need to construct a channel. It's not uh, going to work being just a single line. I can tidy it up. I can do all sorts of things with it. So let's, uh, let's take that around the corner, round that up a little bit more, and let's make it into a ribbon. So we'll go this way with it. We'll come around. Let's go beyond our border a little bit just to get that in. Uh, well, oh, my ribbon has gone very thick there. It's uh, me trying to do it in a rush. If you are doing this, you would take much more time and effort over it. Uh, and then, so let's do the same down here. So let's turn this into ribbon as we go, going our way around. And you could edit this, you can uh, tidy it up. You've got the squares there to be able to make it symmetrical if that's what you want. We can go this way into it and out of it again. And then one of the things which I think is fun is to have another line threading through it. So let's bring our line into here so we can come into there. Maybe we go out the other side a little bit, round the corner and into there and then that's what continues. You can have hours of fun playing with this, understanding what goes in, what goes out, uh, all of those kind of things. So I'm going to draw that one uh, sweeping through. Then I might curve this one back up so that it rejoins. Then what I do is I go in with my pencil eraser. Now this is one of the Mono Zero uh, pencil erasers by Tombow. I like them because they're accurate. So I will go in and I will tidy things up. And the other thing I will do is I will decide with my ribbons what goes over the top and what goes underneath. Now, for some reason, I've already broken it up, but I am going to, this is the bit that does make your head hurt a little bit, 
trying to work out. So that goes underneath and that goes over the top. The normal rule of thumb is if a ribbon went over the top, it needs to go underneath the next one and then over the top of the next one and then underneath. So you've got it alternating. That is the general rule of thumb. It doesn't always work, but it certainly gives you an idea. Now let's have a look at this. So if that one goes over, then this one goes under. Oh, then that one should go over, except that messes up that bit. Never mind. Um, then that one goes under. And you can send yourself really quite balmy doing this. <laughs> but do you see what I mean in terms of construction? That gives you just a general, very, very rough idea of how I put together with much more care and attention this pattern. It took a little bit of refining. Uh, every time I draw it, I make a few boo-boos here and there with the thickness of my ribbon. But you can see right from kind of basic roots uh, to something more complicated. Now, what has the lovely Sue said? Sue's put, as a child, I used to draw intricate knotwork across a whole page, not symmetrical, but so relaxing. It is really relaxing. It's quite uh, therapeutic, I think. So grab yourself a bit of paper. The graph paper will help you neaten it up. Uh, tracing paper, if you decide to use it in a project, is going to assist you kind of uh, not losing your marbles and having to draw it freehand every time. So I'm hoping that all of these tools uh, really help you to construct. Now, let's get rid of all of this and show you where I'm at with just a very small version of some of the more complicated uh, paintings we've been talking about. Now, I know a couple of you have messaged me uh, during the last couple of weeks asking about the surfaces that I've been working on. Uh, last two weeks, I've been working on Mount Board, but the hair, this one right here, is actually done on black watercolour paper. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about black watercolour paper because a couple of you were asking about it. Now, this is my uh, black watercolour pad. The links to this are at this uh, in the description of the live broadcast. They'll also be over on the blog as well. This is a uh, really beautiful 320 gram uh, weight paper so very thick 12 sheets in the pad it doesn't have a cotton content but neither does the mount board for this kind of work for this illustrative wanting it to be very bright on a dark surface type of thing uh, this works really well so let me show you what the tiny bit of prep that I did for you and I need to turn it that way up because that was the way I was working on it so what I did was I uh, drew myself a square. You can see my construction lines uh, on the black paper. And I started off by thinking about where I might want a border to be. I'm just working on a small piece. You can see it in relation to my hand. It's not a big painting. It's certainly nowhere near as complicated as this version, just proving that it doesn't have to be massively complicated. So one of the things I'm going to demonstrate for you straight away is how I get it onto the black watercolour paper. Now I've drawn a little key line, which I'm not entirely convinced you can see in the camera. Yeah, you might just be able to, of where the sort of centre of my knot work is. And I've done that corresponding over here so that I can line the two things up. Now, uh, I know that Mr. Templeman is in the room and he'll be shouting at me if I get my head in the shot. So I'm going to try to do this uh, by eye from a distance. Always easier said than done. I think that's vaguely in the right place. And I've tacked that down. And I'm going to take my white trace down. So just in case you weren't aware, trace down that lovely uh, graphite product where you can use it for transferring line drawings down onto your surface. Comes in a variety of colours too. Also comes in white. Fantastically useful. It's tricky to see which is the right way up. But what I do, if you can just see in this corner, I put a little ink mark in colour so that I know it needs to be that way up. All right, because then too many times I have done it uh, where I've done it the wrong way up. 
Now you can probably see it can be used multiple times and if you look very carefully indeed you'll see the remnants of lots of bits of knotwork from where we did the sunflower demonstration. You can see the those uh, Fibonacci seed pattern that I did. So this can be used again and again and again. It's not just a one hit wonder. I'm going to slide that underneath. Now normally I would say to you uh, use a biro to do your transfer because I think it pushes through the surface uh, with greater ease. But of course, I want to be able to use this piece of tracing paper again and again and again. So that means I've got to do it in pencil. That means I also have to concentrate on what I'm doing and with not work, that can be a bit of a challenge. So the way that I do it is that, let me just uh, double check something. I start at the top, I'm going to try and not get my hand in the way, and I do the top section, the middle, oh dear, I'm making a bad job of this, middle section, and then the bottom section, okay? So it goes top, middle, bottom. So I'm going to try and do this really super speedily so that uh, you're not getting wildly bored with watching me trace. So if you have any questions for me today and you are on the SAA's Facebook page as opposed to my Facebook page because it's going live across multiple platforms today, get your questions into me and I will try to answer them. So this is your moment to start typing away. Uh, so that I can answer anything. Now, Anne uh, B has very kindly put the comment that uh, she likes my black watercolour paper, that it's the best I've ever used, which is very kind. Thank you very much, Anne. Myself and the SAA worked very hard together to um, get a really fine balance between quality and affordability. Right, let's have a look, see if it came through. Yay, Yarika, look at that. And nice kind of crisp transfer has come through really well. I am chuffed to bits with that. I didn't think I was going to achieve uh, that good a transfer doing it live on social media. So uh, there's a plus for me today. Now, all of these things that I've got are all kind of going. I've got a big folder of them occurring at the moment. Now, what I would do ordinarily is I would go back over that, I would probably redraw that. Uh, but for the purposes of today's demonstration, we're just gonna kind of rattle through it. Now, why have I left the corners? I've left the corners because it gives me scope to go back in to either join the bits of not work up if I want them to, or to maybe pop a leaf or two. Now, if we go back to Andrew's poem, it says, spanned betwixt branch, leaf and earth. So if I was doing a bigger version of this, then of course what I would need to do is to, I'd need to think about how I get those things to uh, speak in my piece. Do I do a branch? Do I do a leaf? Do I do something growing up from the ground? I haven't uh, quite got to the bottom of that yet as to what it is that I'm going to do. And uh, but we'll we'll see. That's why I've kind of left the corners free. Now, Rosie's just asked uh, a question to do with other demonstrations that I've done. So just uh, uh, bear with me just one second. She's put I watched you do a wonderful bee and foxglove demo. And one of you can replace the gouache paint with acrylic. Yes, absolutely, Rosie. You know me and my experimental uh, mixed media just test it out. There's never one way of doing the thing that I do, is there? There's always multiple ways of doing it. And if it works really well for you, Rosie, then let me know, because it's always a good to pass that information on to others. So I might pop a leaf in here. You know, I could uh, do a, a few drawings that I would probably do these on uh, tracing paper rather than doing them here, but I might look at leaf patterns. I might add all sorts of other things on here. But what I want to do for you really quickly, uh, just to finish off uh, today's demonstration, you can now see why my uh, web was exactly that shape, can't you? Let me just uh, rub that little bit of uh, stuff that I put in there. So we go back to square one again. This is why tracing is a skill and really quite important to be able to learn. So we can pop that on there. Uh, let's get that lined up as best we can. 
Uh, my tracing paper is a little bit drunk on the page, but never mind. Let's uh, let's hope that uh, isn't a reflection on the drawing. And we'll do that same thing again. There's my little coloured corner. I know that that's the right way up. Slip that underneath. This is going to be interesting because this is a very, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, this is a very, very busy pattern. Um, so Trudy has just asked the question, if you get a dark scuff mark on the black watercolour paper, is there any way to remove it? I have one on a plain background and don't know how to remove it. Um, a dark scuff mark on black watercolour paper. Trudy, do you have any idea at all what the scuff mark was made with? Or is it just like a sort of rubbed part of the paper? That would be good to know to see if I can help you uh, further with that. Um, if not, uh, Trudy, my love, you're very, very welcome to message me and uh, we can have a further conversation about that and we'll see if we can get to the bottom of that for you. So let's just check that that's coming through. Yes, it is. Look at that. Awesome. Uh, what else have we got going on? Uh, so we've got a few lines coming out here. I'm only going to do this very roughly and very quickly because I'm sure you're going to want to see the sort of final ta-da. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. I'm lifting up the corner of the tracing paper simply because the pattern underneath on the trace down is making my head hurt a little bit. So we're coming off this way. It won't be exact, but it will be fine for the purposes of today's demonstration. And it will also, if you're wondering, if you sort of come in halfway through and you're thinking, what is she doing? Um, I'm trying to go back to a few basics with regards to the composition of how I put some of my work together, how I physically put it together in terms of technique, all of those kind of things, because I thought after all the things we've discussed over the last few weeks, it might be useful to you to see it done in this way. <laughs> Julie has very kindly said she's in awe of my multitasking skills. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I was born to it, Julie. My uh, theatre career kind of made it uh, inevitable that I could uh, do all these things all at the same time. Can't do anything else. Uh, I can talk and draw and answer questions at the same time, so it seems. <laughs> right, where did I get to? Here we go. Uh, drawing my way across. By the way, while I'm doing this, I do appreciate all of you tuning in, no matter whether you are tuning in uh, live or on catch up, simply because um, it means a great deal to support artists like myself. Otherwise, we're just talking to an empty room. So it's lovely that you all take the, the time and trouble to tune in. It's really great. And uh, a big thank you to everybody who has supported me through Dorset Art Weeks, including, of course, the awesome SAA team uh, who have been beavering away in the background, uh, making suggestions, helping me out, putting things in place. Uh, they really are an awesome team and we'll talk more about them at the end of the broadcast today so don't disappear on me yet I've got a little bit of news to share with you and some thank yous to make but for the time being I am going to be finishing off my cobweb so uh, let's get to the end of this and of course it's not the end of the world because we drew this from scratch you, you knew how it was constructed if I take the tracing away and it hasn't particularly worked we can go back in with a white watercolour pencil, which is what I'll show you in just a minute. In fact, you know what? I think I'm done. So let's do the little drum roll moment where we peel it away. And there is that uh, cobweb constructed within our Celtic Knotwork border. Then what I would do is I might go back over with a putty eraser and just uh, make those lines a little lighter. One thing Trace Down does do is it creates a slightly thicker line than you might necessarily like. So if you go back over them with a putty eraser, um, I particularly like these putty erasers because they're kneadable and you can get the most out of them. Then you can work back in with your white watercolour pencil. Uh, this is a Derwent white watercolour pencil and uh, let me just put my hand there and uh, then I can draw back in with it to make better lines and shapes it's not quite as white as the trace down but it certainly uh, does the job and you can see now how my 
spiderweb is actually linked up to my knot work and actually the knot work as a pattern and as uh, an illustrative tool um, works really well with the spider web. Now we've been talking about different surfaces haven't we? We've been talking about mount board and uh, watercolour paper and things in the last couple of weeks. Heather asks a pertinent question, can you use masking fluid successfully on mount board? Yes you can Heather, you just need to be acutely aware of the age of your masking fluid. Uh, in other words, it can't be in any way too old. And the length, um, the thickness of the film that you actually apply. It needs to be super thin and dry almost on contact. You don't want it to be sinking into the surface at all, okay? So just a really thin layer delivered with a ruling pen, something like that will certainly uh, make it a lot easier to remove. But take a bit of uh, mount board, take an off cut of mount board exactly as you saw me do with my colour charts and uh, do a little uh, test. That's always the way forward. You know me, my answer is usually experiment, isn't it? So I can work my way back around this. Then I would have a, a discussion with myself about did I want anything else in there? Did I want to expand on this in any way? Did I want to add extra things around the edge? Where is Andrew's beautiful text going to go? Because let's not forget that has been the starting point of everything. So let's take you back to that poem, that spun weave threaded gossamer and sunlight. Have I missed the sunlight element out of it? Should I add that back in? All of those kind of things. And uh, you can see with the hair and certainly with the sunflower that I did last week, um, how important it is for the text to take part and be the main feature in all of this because that has been my starting point. That has been uh, my inspiration, all of those kind of things. Now, Jeanette is saying, can you remind me where I can find the links to the materials, please? Jeanette, you can find the links if you are watching live on Facebook right now or on catch up on Facebook. In the description of this post, you will find the materials links or you can pop over to my blog. So let's give you all, hello, um, all of those links again and all of those places where you can find stuff, okay? So you can go over to my website, uh, www.alisonseaboard.co.uk and if you go to the blog, it's called DAW blog, door blog, you will see all of the blog posts. I've done one every single day for the duration of this event. We've still got six days to go. Um, so there's lots of blogs uh, coming up. You will find the links in there. Um, you can also find me uh, at Ali Board Artist uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Do give me a follow, a like and a share. And don't forget as well that all of the products that I have been using are available from the SAA. One of the things that uh, we wanted to do as part of these broadcasts was to encourage new members. So if you're not a member of the SAA yet, then I cannot impress upon you enough how awesome they are. Just the UK's largest art hub uh, with people like yourselves, no matter what level you are at with your art adventures, whether you are just a beginner or a, a professional like myself. And if you would like a stunning free gift when you join, which is actually worth more than your membership, put that code in at the checkout, ACBDAW, let's give it to you now, ACBDAW22, you will get uh, my Saunders Waterford pad, three of my brand uh, watercolours, those new ones that came out earlier in the year, and an imitation sable brush. So just to finish off, don't disappear on me yet because I've, uh, I've got a few things uh, to say and a few things to link you up. Now, don't forget, Technique Tuesday is now just disappearing temporarily um, until the 5th of July when I will be back with lots to talk about and lots to shout about. That will be back over on the Alison Seaboard uh, Facebook page. It will be at nine o'clock. But we have an extra demonstration for you, that Jubilee demonstration, Raven at the Tower on Thursday the 2nd of June. It says 9 o'clock, but I have had a look and I think I did that very late at night. It is actually 10 o'clock, but check the listings. Um, if anything, you'll be early, won't you? Um, 
and uh, then uh, over there as well you'll find the photograph that I am working from you'll find a list of materials they are all up there ready for you and uh, I know that for some of you scattered across the globe that is a little bit early but I promise you it will be there on catch up too now I have some thank yous to make this is the last of my Dorset Art Week uh, live broadcasts thank you to all of you for watching for tuning in and supporting thank you to everybody who has turned up in the studio to support me thank you to everybody who's purchased things uh, bought paintings who I've chatted to it's been awesome um, I want to uh, say a big thank you to the SAA team to everybody you know them as well as I do by now to Anita who tunes into broadcast to Gary who tunes into broadcast as well um, but to some of those people that uh, do things behind the scenes that maybe you don't know about so that's Sam and Tara and Chrissy and Carla who have put uh, these things together who have allowed me to be a uh, part of the SAA's Facebook page so I, I hope they think that that was worthwhile uh, so huge thanks to everybody still six days of the event to go still six subjects uh, for me to write about obviously it's spider web day today so there'll be uh, a blog post already out about that we've still got uh, what else have we got coming up we've got uh, owls and rocks and musicians and all sorts of things that we can chat about so plenty for you to still come and then the last day is the 29th of may so that's the sunday coming uh, and then i have to put it all away i have to find a home for it all but a huge thanks to everybody tuning in live or catch up uh, your support is very much appreciated i hope some of the things that we've talked about in the last three weeks have been useful to you and your own work keep sharing on social media and more importantly than anything keep looking out for each other because we need that more than ever take care you lovely lovely people and i will see you very soon <laughs> bye